let's pivot to another application of this. Everything we've talked about so far has really set the stage for understanding the role that macronutrients, but more specifically calories uh, and energy intake and expenditure play in weight loss. Let's now talk about a very specific macronutrient, which is protein and its importance in, yeah, exactly, its importance in muscle acquisition. So um, I have a saying that I'm sure many others have said, and I'm sure I'm paraphrasing it from somebody, but never in the history of civilization, I will assert, has a 90-year-old person said, I wish I had less muscle. <laughs> like it can't, they, they, they can't, that can't be uttered, right? If you want to be metabolically healthy, the best thing you can do is have lots of lean body mass. It is a metabolic sink is the best way to describe it. You, if you look at people who are even like obese, who are power lifters, they might have like some elevations in like blood lipids and whatnot, but usually their insulin sensitivity and blood glucose is still okay. Um, if, you, if you look at people who train really hard, even with excess adiposity, I, I mean, they see this with people who are obese, who they start them just exercising. Without exercise, one of the only things that we know of that without even weight loss improves metabolic health and substantially, really substantially. And I think I, I was actually on the Rogan podcast and one of the points I, I, I made a few years ago was I said- This was you know, the one with Dom? Yes. Yeah. So I said, you know, a lot of people get real caught up in carbs and fats and all this and they're not even exercising. I'm like, you're literally, you're, you are stepping over dollars to pick up fractions of pennies right now. Like if you just got active and it, it's not even a high dose that's required. It's not, I mean, a high dose is great, but just going and being sedentary and walking, you will see improvements in, in health markers for, you know, a hundred minutes a week. That's it. And then obviously there's, there can be a linear effect. Um, but you know, people will look at me and I remember I, I had my blood work done a while back. Now I do have familial hypocholesterolemia so my LDL tends to run a little bit high, but you know, people were speculating that I would have like really high inflammation because I talk about, you know, I still will eat, you know, um, probably around 70 to 80 grams of sugar a day, but I'm also getting, you know, 60, 70 grams of fiber along with that. Because, oh, your CRP is going to be all of it. My CRP wasn't hardly detectable. It, it was on the low ends of detection. And again, that just speaks to the fact that there is a big difference between somebody who is a athlete training hard, who has a lot of muscle mass versus somebody who's sedentary with excess adiposity. It's it just, it's not even comparable when you talk about like food choices and whatnot. You have a lot more you can get away with, with, with a lot of muscle mass. And you, your point that being older and frail, people don't think about this. This is something that you know, everybody's kind of like, wow. Well, the funniest thing I get, Peter, is people say, oh, you do all that heavy lifting. You're going to be in pain when you're older. You're going to be in pain when you're older regardless. <laughs> you might as well be in pain and strong versus <laughs> in pain and weak. I have members of my family who I love dearly who have been sedentary for a long time who have all kinds of sciatica and back issues. I mean, I have had back issues from heavy lifting, but they come and they go and, you know, I'm still here. I'm still able to lift. And, and honestly, I find most people who have experienced activity and inactivity will almost always tell you if they're being deliberate in how they recall it, you're generally in more discomfort when you're inactive. Oh, for I mean, sure. sitting down, I, I, again, I, I don't remember where these zingers came from, but none of them are mine, but uh, this is one of my favorites, right? Sitting is to lower back pain. What bourbon is to alcoholism. Hell yeah. Um, the, the, the worst thing you can do is be immobile. I, I say, as I'm sitting here, right? <laughs> I notice <laughs> well, you're standing, yeah. but yeah. This podcast is for general informational purposes only and does not constitute the practice of medicine, nursing, or other professional healthcare services, including the giving of medical advice. No doctor patient relationship is formed. The use of this information and the materials linked to this podcast is at the user's own risk. The content on this podcast is not intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. Users should not disregard or delay in obtaining medical advice 
from any medical condition they have, and they should seek the assistance of their healthcare professionals for any such conditions. Finally, I take conflicts of interest very seriously. For all of my disclosures and the companies I invest in or advise, please visit peteratiamd.com forward slash about, where I keep an up-to-date and active list of such companies. 